Hello and welcome. Like most people who have a shed, I also have a collection of hammers, some for wood and some for metal. However, I don't have a machinist hammer and I reckon it's time I made one or two or maybe three. I've watched several YouTube videos on machinist hammers and there are some interesting builds out there. The one I'm basing my plan on is the machinist hammer made by Tim Newmy. So I'll base mine on his design with full credit going to him for the design inspiration. I'll leave a link to his video in the description. I have some pieces of aluminium, brass, copper, delrin and wheelong, and I'm sure some stainless 304 will find its way into the build. G'day, I'm Steve-O and welcome to the Outback Shed. For this build I need a drawing. I'm not into CAD and I don't have specific drawing software. So for this project I'll fabricate a not to scale concept drawing in Excel. I will make three hammers. Each will be different but based on the same plan. One will have an aluminium head with an aluminium handle. One with an aluminium head and a stainless steel handle. And one with a stainless steel head and an aluminium handle. There will be a mixture of inserts made from copper, brass and wheelon. This will provide three hammers with totally different characteristics and balance. The delrin I have is 60mm in diameter and I don't want to cut that down to 30 So I'll make those at a later date when I have some stock closer to the size. The plant is flexible and a guide only. I'll make some fine adjustments during the build. For the handle, I'll centre the stock and extend it in the chuck, then bring it to diameter ready for knurling. After taking a couple of cuts, the micrometer confirms that the lathe is cutting parallel. I don't think it's ever run better since I did a maintenance day and mounted it on levelling feet. The work of levelling the lathe was well worth the effort. As knurling is not an exact science, the best chance of a successful knurl is to achieve as close as possible to the correct diameter for the knurl being used. I gave a detailed explanation of this in my first video, Forge or Chuck Centering Tool. I'll put a link to this at the end of the video. The diameter I will aim for is highlighted. The aluminium is 2011 grade, but it's not producing a nice swarf, just a shower of small bits. So I'll put a cloth on the lathe to try and contain them and keep them away from the bed wipers. From the tables my target is 22.33mm. Changing tooling is a breeze. I really like this tool holder tree. Some 
Setting the knurl at the right angle is helped by sandwiching a 1-2-3 block in between the chuck face and a blank tool holder. I'll then find the centre by pinching the knurls on the handle, then adjusting the tool to take a decent bite. Not too deep, not too shallow. I want to run this knurl twice for the aluminium handles. Putting plenty of oil on the knurl, there's a fair amount of debris in the oil that's draining, but that's normal for softer metals. The first pass has resulted in a nice imprint but it needs another pass as the knurl is not fully formed. The second pass also produces a lot of debris but a lot of it sticks to the knurl as the pattern will hold some of the debris. That's produced a nice knurl and I'm very happy with it. I'll turn the bar to finish diameter, then cut the end to 12mm for the thread. A quick chamfer and we can cut the thread. This is a heavy duty die holder. Many years ago I made several of them for different sizes of dies. The Tommy bar allows me to have a good feel for what the die is doing and it doesn't transfer torque to the tailstock as the Tommy bar is held by hand. Once the die starts to cut, I release the tailstock lock to allow the die to feed back off the thread when the holder is reversed out. These die holders will allow larger threads to be cut, although of course large threads may need to be single point started. Parting off the handle, I'll clean the end up later.
I'm making three hammers. Two have aluminium heads and the other will have a head made from stainless CO4. Each head requires a 25mm deep threaded hole on each end to attach the inserts. Although I have a tailstock tap holder, I tend to use a drill chuck to hold taps for threading blind holes. If the tap bottoms out, it will spin in the chuck, whereas if a tap chuck is used, the tap will break. All of the threads are finished with a bottoming tap. I've transferred the head to a four drill chuck and centered it. Then a 25mm deep cross hole is bored and threaded to take the handle. These holes are then counterboard to accept a shank for the handle. Then it's rinse and repeat for the other heads. I'm not using a tap follower as the threads were started under power from a chuck. Alignment is not an issue.
I'll bore and thread a hole for a 6mm grub screw to lock the handle in place. Now to make the replaceable inserts, two each of brass, copper and wear long. Brass tends to throw a shower of fine particle swarf everywhere and it sticks to everything. So I use a small thin paintbrush to capture the swarf and drop it directly into a tray making it easier for recycling. After threading and turning to rough size, I'll part it off. I've never machined copper before and this piece is crumbling and the insert just doesn't like it but I squirted some WD-40 on and it seems to have made a huge improvement. Nice cut and nice swarf although the lathe does seem to be labouring a little. The slow-mo shows that the swarf is being produced slower than the rotation rate of the workpiece. That might suggest some compression of the swarf is occurring. It's also pushing a bead in front of the insert. Although I'm not sure what that means, it is cutting fine, so I'll take it.
Another run with the die holder and the pad is shredded. I relieve each shred but as I don't have a form tool small enough I'll use a parting tool. Not the best choice but it's what I have. Parting off under power feed and it's working well. Not sure I would want to do that manually. I've changed to a high speed steel tool bit for the wear line. I've had good results with this cutter on plastics. Again, it's just rinse and repeat for the thread and pat it off. I changed the plan by machining a recess into the heads. This will allow for any difference in diameter at each end of the inserts. Now to assemble them. Two hammers have aluminium heads. One with brass and wear lot inserts and a stainless steel handle and the other with copper and wear lot inserts and an aluminium handle. The other has a stainless steel head with brass and copper inserts and an aluminium handle.
I've set up a bar and a boring bar holder and the differences in balance can be seen. These three hammers provide a combination of different weight and balance characteristics with each having its own unique personality. I guess over time I'll decide which one I like best. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video and found it of value. If so, please consider subscribing and liking. Be productive, be creative, but most importantly, be safe in your shed. Catch you next time.